What do you get when you cross a Hollywood movie star and Nidus? Maggot Robbie. Oh, oh, okay, wait, wait. Maybe that joke's a little mean. Uh, I don't want anyone to get bugged by it. Let's try again. Uh, how does Nidus power his phone? He uses his Helminth charger. That's better. May but maybe I can do another one. Uh, let's see here. How does Nidus always know how to do the evilest thing possible? He just checks his synapse. Yeah, I think that's better, but maybe there's another pun in here somewhere that I can find. Did you know that Nidus has a list of all the potentially deadly ways to block an artery? He calls it his Embo list. Okay, okay, I'm done. Now to Ikra out a way to introduce this build. Enough puns. Welcome to Off The Meta, where I make an off-meta build and go through how I came up with it at the end of the video. If you want more fun builds to try, do that like and subscribe thing. All of the aspects of this build have been floating around for a while. I also have a lot of catching up to do when it comes to making builds and doing that kind of thing, so let's get started. Warframe has a lot of infested weapons, and a lot of them are pretty good. So let's do something with some of the best of them, along with our buggy boy, Nidus. Point of importance, none of this build requires a ribbon, and it is viable for Steel Path. In fact, all of the footage will be Steel Path. Alright, let's start with Nidus. Starting from the top, Steel Charge. One of the better things for damage here is going to be the melee weapon, so this is handy for that. And also, you know, mod capacity. Exilus slot, mine's empty, but power drift or energy drift will probably be the most useful. Just flavor it for yourself. Consider it a flex slot. Umbral mods next. I'm going to be using all of them because all of them are beneficial for Nidus. Also, by just saying all of them, it'll save me a little time on this video because it's going to be hella long. I hope you stay till the end. Up next, adaptation because this boy needs to be tanky as he can be. Steel path enemies take no quarter or nickels, or dimes, or pesos, or your regional equivalent coin currency. Next, Hunter Adrenaline. If Nidus is going to be taking damage, he might as well be getting something for his effort. Since he can heal himself anyways, it won't be a big deal. Primed Continuity will keep Parasitic Link and Ravenous up for longer. Also Larva, although that doesn't matter much because you can end it early just by murdering everything in it. Okay, so this build is going to be using two Needle Burrito mods. First off, Strain Consume. Dead maggots spawned from your Helminth Charger will restore 4% of missing health. It may not be the best effect for Nidus himself, but the set increase for the maggot spawnings will boost some other handy stats. And hey, if you do get the heals, that's only cash money, right? Lastly, but certainly not least, Teeming Virulence. That's the ability mod for when Nidus hits 4 enemies with Virulence, his 1. He gets plus 120% crit chance on his primary weapon. This may not seem like much, but the mod's effectiveness is influenced by power strength. So it's more like 215% with this build, and it goes up to 300 something percent when he's using his umbilical cord on an ally. Speaking of his primary weapon, if you couldn't guess from the intro, I'm using the Synapse. I've got a pretty basic build here with some important improvements to mention. Let's pop through the usual suspects on a crit build. Serration for damage, split chamber for multi-shot, point strike for critical chance, and vital sense for critical damage. That leaves us with half a build to discuss. Vigilante Armaments is going in here for the multi-shot and the crit boosting. Hammer shot for more crit damage, and to hopefully boost those statuses a little more to help chew through Grenier armor. I have a single elemental in here. Personally, I'm rolling Infected Clip, but you can flex slot that into any damage type you want. The last slot is going to be Primed Shred. Now you could use Vigilante Offense instead for boosted crits, but I wanted to go for a little more fire rate as well. Why punch through on a beam weapon? You'll just have to stick around to the end to find out, winky face. Oh, and if you want to fill out the Wexel slot, I guess Vigilante Supplies would be nice just to keep topped up on ammo. Okay, so where do I go from here? Uh, let's do the pet next. He's got important stuff for the build. Clearly, there's only one choice here, and I've already mentioned it before. But we're using the boy or girl with the best tasting name of Hell Mint. Er, uh, Hell Mint Charger. Okay, so what are we doing here? First off, I'm obviously going to link health and armor with Nidus, because he's got a bunch of it. Next, I want to give my buddy some teeth and claws with bite and maul giving them increased damage, critical chance, and critical damage. Speaking of those stats, Hunter's Synergy. 
Since I'm using a high crit chance weapon and boosting that crit chance even more, I might as well share those stats too. Next, I guess I'll give my buddy his long tongue with proboscis. Though you could easily use trample instead if you wanted. Primed animal instinct will help my little buddy figure out where to fetch me some resources and ammo, and also help find enemies to use larva on. Last in this build is going to be strain fever and strain eruption. Strain Eruption makes those bugs explode on death and deal 4% of an enemy's health as corrosive damage in an 8 meter burst. Strain Fever on the other hand increases the charger's damage by 30% per cyst, so hopefully the charger will be hitting like a little bit of a brick. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the last of the set mod build before it puts a strain on our relationship. For this, I'm continuing the infested set with the Dual Icker. Once upon a time, these used to be a hard meta option. Nowadays, I don't really see anyone using them at all. I'll be starting out with Triple P. If you want to prime your foes with the next weapon in order to use Condition Overload, that's up to you. I don't feel like it though. I want a little status chance, and I need a little combo duration for this next part, which is Blood Rush. The Dual Icker have a pretty dang good crit stat by default, and this will send it into guaranteed crits really easily. Organ Shatter because what's the point of using crit chance without crit damage? Lastly, there's three whole flood slots depending on how much pharma you want to use. Personally, I'm rocking Primed Fever Strike and 260 mods to strip armor on heavier enemies, but one could easily choose to utilize three whole elements or even use a Gladiator mod or two in there. This next part isn't optional though. I mean, technically it is, but y you know, I'm using all the strain mods, so yeah. Strain Infection. Melee attacks gain plus 20% critical damage per cyst. There's a little indicator on the UI that will tell you how much of a boost you'll be getting at any time because it'll vary from moment to moment as your charger builds up and spits out maggots. And then those maggots die. Still, we're talking about a potential 250% increase on crit damage between organ shatter and a full cyst moment on the charger. Talk about some cash money. The last little bit in this build certainly isn't necessary, but it's a nice tool to have. The Embo List. Whether you need to strip armor or shields, you know, depending on enemy type, this weapon will come in handy. Okay, so standard mods, Barrel Diffusion, Hornet Strike, and Lethal Torrent for that mix of damage, multi-shot, and a touch of fire rate. Then, 360-60s for whatever flavor of status mix you want. Sure Shot, and either another 60-60 or a pure elemental like Prime Heat of Charge. Now, the Embolus garbage fire range makes it, well, kinda garbage. Unless, of course, you gather up a bunch of enemies in a nice little bundle and pour a mixture of fire acid all over them, or magnetic gas, or viral radiation, or whatever mixture of statuses you want or need. As far as the Wexilus options, maybe lock and load or ammo mutation. There's some other stuff that's going to come in handy for this build. First of all, Arcanes. Personally, I'm rocking Arcane Fury and Arcane Strike to boost the Icker even harder. When it comes to Operator stuff, I'm going to suggest Magus Repair and Lockdown for a little extra measure of safety and healing. And, instead of using Xeneric, use Naraman for Power Spike. That way you can hold on to those combo stacks a little easier over the course of a mission. Of course, you can modify this build if you want to. Explosive crit based primaries like the Chalker, Exceltra, or even the Secura Penta can all take advantage of teaming virulence and larvid enemies. And secondaries like the Kuva Nucor or even the Castanas can take advantage of the larva too. This build is well, I'll allow Barbosa to describe it. What is more what you call guidelines than actual rules? There's other options as well. Anything crit based is really great for this build, like sniper rifles that can shoot through an entire pack of enemies. Now that I've got a handy bundle of tools available here, how are they going to be used? The Helmuth Charger is going to do its own thing. As pet owners, we just have to accept that. Nidus and his weapons on the other hand? There's a lot that can be done here. First of all, typical Nidus things. Gather up enemies with larva, spam virulence until you're able to take damage, and use Parasitic Link and Ravenous. That's the easy stuff. The handy thing is that you can use Larva to gather up enemies for various reasons other than utilizing his virulence. You can use Larva and virulence to prime your primary weapon and then use the synapse to chew through the gathered up enemies thanks to punch through. Alternatively, you can do the same thing except chase down the stragglers first and then come back to the ones that are gathered up. 
You can also use larva to gather up enemies and then build your combo meter on everyone in the pile. Or simply spew down their defenses with the embolus while using virulence to boost mutation stacks. While it all uses larva, there's a lot of variety with what you can do using this tool. Okay, so how did I come up with this build? First, I wanted to use the strain mods. In fact, I'm trying to figure out builds for all of the pet mods. The mecha set was obviously first with my Kuberino build. This one is obviously the next in that series. So after prepping the strain mods, there's a lot of room left with what I can do with them and with Nidus. Clearly the best way to go is infested weapons. You know, to match the aesthetic. From there, it just kind of boiled down to deciding what I wanted to showcase and what fit into the build options. From there, I decided to use Teeming Virulence. Combo that with a crit weapon, use the Embolus to spew statuses into a larvid crowd of enemies, and the Dual Icker is just a great weapon to use all on its own. Hell, the Synapse used to be pretty top tier, but has since fallen by the wayside. Bringing them all together though? I think it's pretty damn fun, even if it requires a significant Forma investment. All the worthwhile weapons do, however. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Now that the build video is done, gather up your friends, stomp your feet, bring out the bug snakes, pet your mutated doggo, spew cool aids, start the laser show, and then sing a nursery rhyme. Ickery dickery doc, I'll shoot Grenier with my Glock. The Glock shot one and two fell down. Ickery dickery Glock. Ah, good old Tenno nursery rhymes.